Hello and welcome to today's talk, Sunday the 3rd of March. Now today we're going to be looking at a letter written by British parliamentarians to the data holding agencies in the United Kingdom asking for very fine week by week, year by year of age data relating COVID vaccinations to deaths and excess deaths. And I'll be looking at this letter in some detail. It's really time that this debate was put to bed. It's been, it's been rumbling on for such a long time now. And if this data is released, we can say, you know what? All our fears were misguided. Th there is no relationship here. Unless, of course, there is a, a relationship. Which is what we want to know, uh, of course. Now, uh, this is the tweet from Andrew Bridgen uh, dealing with this letter, which has only recently been released into the public domain. And we can see here it's been validated by Professor Norman Fenton and Professor Carl Hennigan, two of the leading um, authorities in the country. And I think I haven't been able to contact Norman Fenton today, but I think basically what they're saying is this data can be released without compromising a patient individual confidentiality. I think is basically what it's saying. Now, let's just look at the letter very briefly before we dive into some of the detail. Uh, this is the letter here, um, three pages, and I'm going to unpack it a bit. But what's also really reassuring or comforting, really, is this is being covered by the Daily Telegraph. Now, in the United States, you won't know about it, but it's one of the major UK uh, newspapers. So this is getting into mainstream media, certain parts of mainstream media. I didn't see it covered on the BBC, but uh, let's look at what the Telegraph says first, and then we'll look at the letter in some, in some uh, detail. Now, Daily Telegraph, as we've said, Health Secretary urged to release data that may may link COVID vaccines to excess deaths. So it may, and we're looking for this link, COVID vaccines and excess deaths. We really need to know about this. MPs and peers, that's members of the Houses of Law, House of Lords, criticised a wall of silence. Why the heck have we got this wall of silence? MPs and peers have accused the Health Secretary of withholding data that could link COVID vaccines to excess deaths. It's a cross-party group, and the cross-party group say there's growing public and professional concerns, UK rates of excess deaths since 2020. There's been excess deaths since 2020, and there persists to be excess deaths. We need to know what is going on here. We really do. Um, so the demand to be shown, the underlying data, the underlying data, the fine granular level data, that we can give to our statisticians uh, for the support of the government's assertion. So the government's assertion is currently there's no evidence linking excess deaths to vaccines for COVID-19. Fine, give us the evidence and we'll have our own statisticians review it. That's what we need. It's a very simple request. Now, there's 21 MPs and peers in the Daily Telegraph article supporting this. There were seven have signed the letter. Um, in those, if those data do indeed exist, please share them. Uh, if thorough investigations have already ruled out such a link, please share the relevant. Yeah, so if the government's data has ruled it out, then all we're asking is for the transparency to see that data. But what is unreasonable about this request? Absolutely nothing that I can see. Now, they've written to the Health Secretary, Department of Health and Social Care, Medicines Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, UK Health Security Agency. So that pretty well covers the data holders. So all of these have been approached. Um, potentially critical data, which maps the data of people's COVID vaccine doses to the date of their deaths is what we want so we can eliminate this possibility and validate the government's claim the government's claim that um, no evidence linking excess death to the covid vaccines that's all we want to do we simply want to validate the government's statement that's all now, this data apparently has been released to pharmaceutical companies. Now, this is deeply concerning. If this is true from the Daily Telegraph, that the data has been released for, to pharmaceutical companies that are basically there to make money, but not released to um, the public and uh, for our uh, public-spirited statisticians to analyse, then 
why would they release it to Big Pharma and not to the public? I mean, can, can you think of any reason why they might release it to Big Pharma, but not to the hoi polloi like you and me? Not to the plodetariat, the plebeian class? Um, maybe we simply don't need to know. We just have to be grateful and take their word for anything that dribbles down from their table. So why would they do that? Why would they release it to pharmaceutical companies, but not the public? I mean, obviously, they're, they're independent politicians with no vested interest in this. Why should they possibly do that? Data should be released on the same anonymised basis as it was shared with the pharmaceutical groups. So the pharmaceutical groups believe have this data on an anonymised basis. And there seems to be no credible reason why that should not be done immediately. Immediately. Today is Sunday. So let's hope for a response tomorrow on, on Monday morning. Monday afternoon. Let's, let's not be too over enthusiastic. This could be released very, very, very soon. Realistically, within days, to be quite honest, I would have thought. Uh, questions about these trends, however, have to date been met by a relative wall of silence from your organisations and other public health officials, in the view of these uh, parliamentarians and peers. Now, a uh, Department of Health and Social Care spokesman says we are committed to data transparency and publish a wide range of data on excess mortality. The data sets published are kept under constant review. Now, given that the uh, Department of Health and Social Care are committed to data transparency, I expect we can get this data in the next few days. Let's wait and see. Now, all um, uh, intimations aside, realistically, I don't think this is going to happen this side of the general election. Now, the general election in my country could be as early as May or it could be later in the year. I really don't think we're going to get this data until the general election time because because, um, because you fill in the gaps in the comments. I couldn't possibly say why this data wouldn't be released until the general election, but that's my fear and suspicion. We are going to know this. This is going to come out. I firmly believe that it's just a case of when it's going to come out and I'd like it sooner rather than later. We need to know what is going on so future decisions can be based on this uh, on this information. Now, um, this is probably a bit hard to, uh, to see, but I'll read out the main points. These are direct copies from the uh, from the letters that we have. Um, so basically here they're saying that um, the UK statistics regulator agrees. So basically the UK statistics regulator has agreed that the, currently, the, the data that's currently released it, it does not provide information on vaccine effectiveness or vaccine safety and should not be used in this way. So here we have the people that hold the data um, agreeing that the data in the public domain is so far insufficient to make firm adjudications. Uh, the letter goes on, we are, we are requesting that the authorities redo the analysis with the following parameters, and basically that is looking at the data on a week-by-week -week basis, giving the accurate number of vaccines, whether it's one through to seven. Imagine having seven vaccines, incredible. Um, and the, the timing related to that. What time did people have the vaccines? At what time did the death occur? So we can eliminate this lurking suspicion that the vaccines were a significant etiological causative factor in these deaths. Now, the letter says these parameters have been used in the records in New Zealand and the results were made public and no person has claimed it revealed any personal information because it simply aggregates statistics. This excuse has been used so many times. Oh, we couldn't do that. We, we, we'll re release individual data. No, it can be done without that. There are many ways to do it without that. We've talked about this with various authorities, including members of parliament, that this can be done. Uh, now, your staff was asked to produce a detailed report and they declined to do so. This is where we are bringing the matter to your attention. And they are bringing it to the main cheese, this guy, he's the, he's the boss, Professor Sir Ian Diamond, National Statistician and Chief Executive UK Statistics Authority in the government buildings in Wales. Now, the letter does go on. It gives some detail. I'm not going to go through it in detail. It is now in the public domain. 
but basically they are asking for information of the timing from doses one to seven they want it registered for from week to zero to one five six because it's 2021 to 2023 and they want fine grain details they want male female male female data separately they want the age is accurate up to age of 100 after 100 it can be aggregated because there's not that many people over the age of 100 and they could potentially be identified so that just eliminates that possibility granular granular level data is what we want currently uh, 10 to 20 years of age ranging starting at 18 so th there's big gaps at the moment we want we want individual ages of individual years of age precise time of vaccine doses precise times of deaths uh, deaths on a week by week basis and then the statisticians will be able to give us definitive reassurance that the government statements are in fact correct and uh, they, they give a few more details here they want precise this is about the precise numbers of deaths people that are alive and how that is going to be counted so there we have it. There is the details of the letter here. So you can obviously check this out for yourself. It's now fully in the public domain. And perfectly reasonable, it appears to me. And thanks to these uh, seven parliamentarians and the other 21 members of Parliament and the House of Lords who have asked for this data, Simple request, reassure us all, shut us the heck up and let's get on with the next job because there are plenty. Obviously, as soon as these any of these departments release this data and it's analysed, we'll be talking about it as soon as we possibly can. But I'm afraid it might not come this side of the general election, which is disappointing that such political considerations may be employed when we're dealing with people's lives. That's the letter. It's a reasonable request. And uh, thank you for watching.